Are you struggling to get your next .NET job? It might be your resume that needs some tweaks. Stick around as I go through some practical resume tips to help you land your next exciting .NET job. The tech industry has seen a record number of layoffs in the past 18 months, with AI being the blame. Therefore, more and more applicants are going for one particular job role. Therefore, it's extremely important that your resume stands out from the rest of the crowd. Does your resume contain the correct keywords? If your resume doesn't contain the keywords C Sharp, .NET and ASP.NET Core, the chances are you're not going to hear back from any companies. Companies use automated systems to filter out applicants that are not applicable for the role. Think about it. If a company is after an ASP.NET Core web developer that has entity framework and SQL Server experience, they're going to be looking for those keywords in a resume. Do you have a bit of experience with PHP? Maybe you do a little bit of Angular in your current job role. It's good to show off your skills in a resume, but it runs the risk of confusing recruiters and hiring managers as to what job you actually want and what job you're actually qualified for. By including a list of all the technologies that you know, you run the risk of being contacted by recruiters for jobs that you don't want. So it's at this point where we need to think as to what our ideal job's going to be. Do you prefer to be a .NET web developer focusing on ASP.NET Core, C Sharp and SQL Server, or would you prefer a front-end developer role like using Angular or React? Think about your ideal job and tailor your resume around that. Apply for jobs that you're qualified to do. Have a look at the job description and see if the criteria meets your current skill set. Even if you don't meet all the skill set, it still might be worth applying for the job. But just bear in mind that the more you can match your skill set to the job criteria, the more likely you're going to get an interview. So this is how I'd go through a job description and see if I'm actually qualified for the job. So I look at the skills and experience. I look at all of them and I've got experience in practically all of them. C Sharp, ASP.NET, .NET 8. Got experience in all of that. I think that's supposed to be ASP.NET Core. JavaScript, jQuery, JSON. I've got a fair bit of knowledge with JavaScript. Blazor. I've done three courses on LinkedIn, so I should know that. SQL Server, T-SQL. The list goes on. So this is practically a 100% match for me. So as long as the money was okay, I'd apply for this job. So if we have a look at this job description, they're after a .NET developer role. As part of the requirements, they want someone proficient in C-sharp. Well, if you're a .NET developer, you're going to be proficient in C-sharp, which I am. Experience as a front-end developer. They want experience in Vue.js, which I've never used. Experience with Bootstrap, know a little bit about jQuery. It's a bit old school now. Uh, they want someone with experience with SQL and Entity Framework Core. I would tick the box for that. And a couple of other things I would tick, so MVC, Object Orientated Programming, etc. So most of the requirements tick the box, but the one that stands out is the front end experience. And that makes me wonder whether it'd be worth me applying for this job, particularly as jQuery is quite old school now, and it's not something I particularly want to be working on. This job they're after a senior full stack developer. If we have a look at the requirements, they want extensive experience with React, Next.js, and TypeScript, so they're more after a front-end developer by the looks of it, and experience with AWS, which I've never used. So straight away, I wouldn't even apply for this job. I know for a fact I wouldn't be qualified for it. I'm more after a .NET developer role. Is your resume three pages long? Four pages long? Maybe even more? You need to cut it down to a maximum of two pages. Maybe even one. Companies are subjected to hundreds, maybe even thousands of resumes for a particular job role. Recruiters and hiring managers haven't got the time to go through massive essays to decide on whether you're a suitable candidate for a role. So you need to cut it down and here are some tips on how to do that. If you're applying for a job, the chances are you're gonna to have to fill in personal information like your email address and your mobile number. So ask yourself if that information is needed on a resume as well. Do you like to play 10-pin bowling at the weekend? Maybe your favourite pizza is pepperoni. That's all very well and good, but it doesn't need to go on a resume. So that sort of irrelevant information doesn't need to be included. Do you have a cleaning job on the side? Maybe you like to fix cars in your spare time. That's all very well and good, but it's unrelated to a .NET web developer role. And therefore, if you're applying for a role like that, it doesn't need to be included in your resume. If you've been in the industry a long time, or you've been jumping between jobs every two to three years, you might be encouraged to put every single detail of those jobs onto your resume. But we're limited to two pages. 
Therefore, we need to think about the relevant information that we can put onto our resume for the role that we're applying for. If you work with Classic ASP and a Microsoft Access database between 2006 and 2007, that isn't particularly going to be relevant for applying for a .NET developer role in today's market. We're all hardworking, organized and passionate in our current job, but these are just buzzwords that bloat a resume and they're not really backed up by actions. If you're lucky enough to get a job interview, you can show off your personal traits in an interview, but for a resume, it's not really needed and can be removed. Ask yourself if education is worth adding to your resume. If you've got a computing degree and you're looking for your first job, then possibly. But if you've got that degree 15 years ago, or you've got a degree in English and maths, that's not going to be relevant to a .NET web developer role these days. Recruiters and hiring managers are more interested in your work experience than your education, and therefore think to yourself whether you need to add the education to your resume. Think about the layout of your resume. Is there too much white space? Is the font too big? Have a look to see where you can reduce white space and reduce the length of your resume. Have you uploaded your resume to any job sites like Indeed and LinkedIn? By doing that, recruiters can have a look at your resume and recommend any suitable jobs that they think you might be qualified for. And you can even share your resume in a LinkedIn post. So in LinkedIn, I can create a post. I can click on this plus icon. I click on the add a document icon, choose a file and upload my resume from my machine. Give it a title, my resume. Press done. Then I can share my thoughts and then create a post and share my resume with my followers. Just a word of caution when sharing your resume. If your resume is well written and you qualify for a number of the vacant job roles that are out there, you might find that you're overwhelmed by the number of recruiters that contact you. This has personally happened to me and it's particularly important if you're in a current job and you don't want your current employer to know what you're up to. Do you have a blog? Maybe you upload videos to YouTube or maybe you're working on a side project that could easily be uploaded to GitHub. If you have little to no experience in the industry, this is particularly important. You're going to have to show off your skills in the resume. Recruiters and hiring managers are under extreme pressure to get the right candidate to fulfill the role. Therefore, it's extremely important to show off your skills in a resume. Different companies are looking for different skills. One company might prefer you to work on web APIs with SQL Server, whilst another company might prefer you to work on Blazor. It's best to have a look at the job description and tailor your resume as to the job description. And I would change the resume for every job that you apply for and tweak it towards the job description. Even with these changes, there's still going to be companies that you'll never hear back from. And this could be for many reasons. Maybe the job has been pulled due to financial restraints or an internal employer has already fulfilled the role. Maybe you're not actually suitable for the job role or maybe there's just too many candidates for that particular role. Don't get too disheartened and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Make sure you're applying for jobs, even if you're getting interviews. So you got an interview, great. Now you need to show off your .NET and c -sharp skills in that interview. Watch this video next, where I'll show you how you can go about testing your .NET and c -sharp skills and being fully prepared for any technical questions in an interview. Good luck.